All right, let's talk about the difference between stems and multi-tracks or track outs. So I'm making this video because it's come up recently again, a few times recently with clients and this this difference, right? The difference between stems and multi-tracks or track outs tends to come up periodically for me. So it seems like it's one of those topics that people tend to um, not know the difference or um, be confused about the difference or um, not have nailed down the difference, right? So I think it's worth uh, talking about. And I don't know why it tends to be something that people tend to get wrong, right? It might have to do with more accessibility in the industry, which arguably is also a good thing, right? But I think there are, you know, some people that are skimming topics and then um, not getting the same in-depth training that some of us have gotten, you know, working in studios, for example. Um, and in some ways, that's a good thing, right? There's less gatekeeping for information in the industry. But on the other side, you know, you have... Um, the chance for more confusion, right? Now, I know this topic has come up a lot before online. There have been discussions about it. There have been arguments about it. Um, some people argue, you know, what does it matter if everyone's using the word wrong? Just, you know, a more descriptive linguistic approach for, you know, the definition of stems versus multi-tracks or track outs. Um, and I usually tend to err on the more descriptive linguistic uh, side of things. But in this case, you know, it's a communication thing, right? So if you learn the difference between stems and multi-tracks or track outs, you're then able to communicate more effectively with a professional. So I think it's important to know the difference, to learn the difference, and then it will improve your communication. Because it's, for me, when it has come up with clients or people that don't know the difference, um, it slows down communication, right? So that's, that's my argument for, for um, being a little bit strict about this, I guess. Okay, so what's the problem? When we're working on music, sometimes a producer or an engineer will ask for either stems or track outs or multi-tracks. Um, I'm using track outs and multi-tracks interchangeably. But sometimes an engineer or producer will ask for those. And depending on what they're asking for, they're asking for something slightly different. And they're often at a different stage of the process. And so usually when we're sending these things or receiving these things, it's to switch between um, people, between studios, between DAWs sometimes. And it's in order to continue to work on the music, right? So with both stems and track outs, and I actually think I have videos on printing stems and printing track outs. Um, so I will, if I have those videos, I'll link them in the cards on the screen for you and I'll link them in the description as well. But um, with both stems and multi-tracks, what you have are you have a bunch of tracks for, for your session. They all start at the same point, right? They start at the beginning of the session and it goes through the whole song and it would just look like a bunch of tracks that are all the same exact length that have your entire song in it. So the differences arise with how specific we're being with our tracks, how granular we're getting, and then also with um, what stage of the game we're using them in. So for track outs, those tend to be earlier in the process. So for example, if someone wants to send me something that they started working on um, at home, for example, and they want me to mix it, I would ask for track outs. And what I want for track outs is I want each track in their session to be a separate track that they're sending me. So I would have a kick drum on a separate track from the hi-hats. I would have, you know, each guitar have its own separate track. I would have all, ooh, I cracked my knuckle. I would have all the backing vocals would each have their own um, separate track as opposed to just being one stereo track for all the backing vocals, that kind of thing. And that's because I am going to mix it. So I'm going to want to have more control over each individual track. And that's what I would call multi-tracks or track outs. So with that said, stems tend to be more at the end of the process. So for example, I might make stems for sending music out for a sync library, right? It's more towards the end of the process and it's often used, instead of being used for like the engineer to mix to create the song, um, it's going to be more of a final polished product. It's going to be part of deliverables sometimes. And stems are often used for, for example, sync so people can remix things, rework things. Um, it's often used for remix culture stuff, right? So if somebody wants to remix something, you might send them the stems. Um, and stems tend to be less specific, I can say that word, than track outs, right? So for example, you might have all your backing vocals on one stereo track. You might have all of your drum kit on one stereo track, that kind of thing. So it's still going to represent the whole song, but it's going to be fewer tracks overall. Another thing to consider is that track outs, since they're often used earlier in the process, they tend to be more rough. Whereas with stems, if you take all the stems 
and line them up in a session and you don't change anything about them, that should represent what the stereo mix sounds like and feels like. So stems are much more of a final polished product type of thing. But, you know, with that said, stems are often used to create another version of the polished product, right? Another final product. So, um, you know, they're not the end all be all deliverable, but they are used towards the end of the process. So I hope that makes sense. Let me know if you have any questions. So, yeah, I think that's all I had to say today. I have a meeting in 10 minutes, so I'm probably going to wrap this up and get going. But again, just to give you the cliff notes, right, we have stems. They're used more towards the end of the process. They're more um, final, more polished, more part of the deliverables often, and um, they are less specific. So you might have a bunch of tracks that were separate tracks in your original session that are bounced onto a single stereo track. So um, each like category of instrument usually has its own track, whereas track outs are often used more towards the beginning of the process. They're often more rough, and they have every single track in your session, your original session, um, will be its own track, usually on track outs. So yeah, that's it. That's the whole topic. Um, it's probably a shorty video, but let me know what you think in the comments below. As always, like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell. I have a Patreon. It's patreon.com slash Noise. I also have um, merch on my thread list if you want to check it out. So this is one of the things you can get, um, this exploded mic diagram journal. There's like a few other things that have the exploded mic diagram on it. So please feel free to check that out. Um, if you feel so inclined, my Patreon is patreon.com slash Kato Noise. My thread list is uh, kato.threadlist.com, I think. Um, and all that stuff helps support my channel and keep it independent. And other than that, I come out with new videos every Wednesday. And thank you so much for hanging out. Okay. This might be like one of those pet peeve things. I don't know. Maybe I'm being like too whatever about it. But um, I think it matters. I think it matters because it helps with communication. I don't know. Maybe it's just me being mean, but... Um... It's kind of like one of those indicators of professionalism to me, right? Like if you if you know the difference, if you don't know the difference, then you're immediately less professional in my head, um, which, you know, I don't know. I don't know. The world's weird. Human culture is weird. OK, I'm just babbling. So I'll talk to you later. Bye.